Hi everybody, it's Frances Okoro, the lady behind Informative Event Lives blog. How you're doing? I hope you're fine. Yes, yes. Okay, um, this has been ringing in my heart for a while now. I wanted to put it up as an online Bible study, but I just thought, okay, I can actually do a vlog on it to just to um, perhaps share more on what's in my heart. So it's something I'll title Dear New Believer now that you are saved what next um i i um i have a bit of is it an experience kind of with new believers people have been praying for to come to christ who have now come to christ and then you know since you are a bit new to the faith there are some things that are not really part of you yet and some persons might not really know how to navigate the way forward now the first thing I'll say is um, now that you are saved congratulations thank you for coming into like best life ever in Christ Jesus now that you are saved salvation is basically only a door to all that Christ has for you salvation is kind of like just the access to the whole journey that christ has for you till we get to be with him in heaven so um when people get saved and then stop right at the door they are really missing out on a whole lot of other stuff that they should be getting in christ i'll give you a bit of my story so you know where i'm coming from i think i really got saved in um 2011 that was a period where i left the whole wrong relationship thing and came into christ and i don't know no one i i, I can't remember okay i was a nine first then and nine first was really big on quiet time with god and spending time with god so that gave me a bit of foundation so i knew i should wake up every morning and have my devotion time with the lord and then i don't know you know when you come into a new life in christ the old passes away so I, I had no more taste for um just the normal way of life so i threw myself right back into god going to fellowship joined the uni just became totally engrossed in life in christ and i didn't know the rules then but i was actually doing things that i was supposed to be doing as a new believer but then these days we find new believers who really don't know what to do now that they are in christ so yes the whole euphoria and joy of being saved comes and then since they don't follow up they more often than not fall away from the paths like when the trials come when the issues come since they haven't really built a foundation and capacity after being saved they are more than likely to fall off so i'm just going to give us a bit of um i'm going to make it atomized things that you should do now that you are in christ so dear new believer number one now that you are in christ please get a regular quiet time with god i cannot stress this enough it's going to seem weird at first it's going to seem strange at first but you get used to it like if if, if, if you start at like 20 minutes you get to the point where you are like one hour gone two hours gone with the lord and you really really just want more when i started at first i started with devotionals um I'll just spend a little time with God in the morning, spend about 10 to 15 minutes. And then I just knew I want it, 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 it became a habit, not a habit of routine, but a habit of the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is that I want to be with God. Like the first thought in my happiest days are days when I wake up with a, with a word in my spirit and I wake up with a song on my lips. Those are like my best days ever, you know? So, most persons we ask, what do I do when I want to spend time with God? It seems like just this foreign kind of thing, but I think of it like a date. I think of it like I'm going on a date with the Lord. What do you do when you're on a date with your, um, with your fiancé or with your husband? You talk, you laugh, you gist. Now, Christ has given us 
love letters i can call it that in the bible so most persons want to hear the still small voice you know ringing in their hearts and it does happen but for you to get to that point you have to go through the world even the still small voice adheres to the word of god that is written in his word the bible in front of you right now so if you are saved and you don't have a bible the first place you should start from is getting the bible in this area of having regular quiet time with god get a bible your e-copies and all that those are very good but they can be distracting you know you are, you are, you are using the e-bible e and then the message is popping up from this person or with the next person so get a hard copy bible if you got saved on monday there's something that christ does when you come into him he puts in a hunger <coughs> excuse me he puts in a hunger for his word inside of you and that is very important because the word is the tool by which you can grow first timothy i think 3 16 talks about how all scripture is god breathed useful for correction for reproof and for training the righteousness of the man of god so the the word of god is the tool by which it trains you into maturity so let me give you a bit of what i do when you wake up i don't have a um I try not to make my quiet time like a routine quiet time. I make it my time with the Lord. So there are some mornings I wake up and then the one thing that is in my spirit to do is to dance. Or the one thing that is in my spirit to do is to sing and sing. Or some mornings I just wake up and I'm just all quiet. Or some mornings I just want to pray in the spirit. It's, it's, it's all fellowshipping with the Lord. But then there are some basic things since you are new that you could start doing. First of all, when you wake up, spend time in worship. Spend time in worship. If you have, um, um, if there's no song in your heart, these days when I wake up, there's always a song in my heart. But if there's no song in your heart, get on your favorite gospel songs and just worship along with them. God loves to hear our voice in the morning. Just sing to him. Sing to the Lord, oh my soul. Let the heavens shout for joy. We sing great, great, great is our God. We sing great are you, Lord, great is our god just sing to him just just worship him just praise him adore him thank him for his mercies thank him for who he is thank him because he's this glorious amazing god who saved you not because of anything that you did or have done but just because of his grace and let gratitude just flow from your heart upwards and then as you praise as you worship you can go into praying thanking god blessing his name giving him all the glory and then one thing again i do even before i try to pray for myself is that i intercede for others just like um first timothy 2 says that i urge you therefore that first of all you should pray for others give thanks for them so if you have a list of like family members or your country nigeria or your church or the church of god worldwide or people you know going through issues just bring them up before god and then also bring up your request bring up your day just lay it bare before God and ask him to take control prayer is not a means of routine prayer is a means of communicating with God so you are talking with God you are having a conversation with God that's just it don't make it too much of I don't know what to say if it's your local language you can speak speak your local language if it's pidgin you can speak speak pidgin if it's English if it's Yoruba just have in mind that I'm just talking with my father the Bible says that so therefore we can come before his throne where we can find grace and mercy in times of need Jesus has rented rendered that place of that place of you can't come to God as your father. He is now your father. How do you speak to your father? Speak to God that way. And then the most important part of what I do is to spend time in the word of God. 
um, depending on how much time you have and how it's okay um, 30 minutes is okay 20 minutes is okay since you are a new believer you could start with like maybe five minutes ten minutes and then you just get to see this intense desire in you to hear from God and grow in the word and that's it so number one is establish a regular quiet time with God number two is get wrapped up in church the, the the essence of fellowshipping with other believers cannot be understated. If you don't have a Bible believing church, ask God to lead you to one where you can grow, where you're under a chair fad, you know. And midweek services, Sunday services, don't do it as a routine. I like I like seeing it as I'm going to the house of my father to worship. So get that also done and you could establish also a regular prayer time with god quiet time your um, um getting involved with believers prayer time these days i do like maybe an hour a day or you could start from 20 minutes a day 30 minutes just to spend time praying prayers are more so 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 important if you don't have any needs to pray for yourself you could spend that quiet time, that prayer time just talking to God now it's important that you establish these things as a regular habit in your life there are some disciplines as Christians that we cannot do away with it's just not possible like they cannot be done away with you'll find out that these things when you establish them they become your core so when issues come you always have a place you have a place of intimacy you have a place of fellowship with the lord again i say congratulations now that you are in christ but do not just stop at the door please come in through the door please establish a fellowship and relationship with your father and as you do that you just begin to see things in a whole new light your life grows from like light to light and glory to glory you know get down a, a, a journal a jotter during your quiet time where you just pull down things that god lays on your heart it's it's really amazing i tell you it's amazing to have like a time a date i call it a date with the lord every single day of your life you might be ill on some days things might happen on some days but just make it like more often than not consistently you are in christ and you have a date and a time with him per day i make mine in the morning because i found out that it's just really great for me to spend my time getting filled up with god but i know that there are people with different schedules people who have traffic situations and all that just fix a time that is good for you in the morning is really really great if you have to wake up one hour early then do that if you have to wake up 30 minutes early then do that it doesn't it doesn't seem like a normal thing at first but trust me it becomes so amazing as time goes on if you just hold on and be consistent so again dear new believer now that you're in christ number one establish a regular quiet time a date with the lord spending time with him every day in the world and prayers and worship to get wrapped up in the family of believers pray that god will lead you to a bible believing church where your spirit and soul is fed number three get a prayer time per day get a prayer time per day 20 minutes 30 minutes and then you just find yourself growing and growing prayer strengthens you prayer is where you bring your innermost petitions to god and then i also do something aside from that regular prayer time if i'm in traffic if i'm traveling i just i just focus on the lord like throughout my day i speak to him in like lord this is what is happening lord this is what is happening or i just breathe out the tanks thank you for this thank you for i make him a part of my life in in total 24 hours a day a part of my life i think of you know the bible says in isaiah 54 that the lord your god is your husband your maker he is your husband so think of if you have a physical husband your thoughts are on them 24 hours a day so much more so christ your thoughts 
you train your thoughts and your life to be filled up of him make him a part of your life in entirety and then you 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 just go out in a day and the presence of the lord is so manifestly real to you because you are in touch with him i pray that you will not fall away from the faith you've started a great work with christ i pray that even as you are taking steps to grow in christ right now through you, God will disciple others to grow in Him. I pray that you will experience a relationship with God so intimate, so close, so deep, that nothing can shake you away from it. I pray that from the depths of your hearts, that you will come into Christ fully, totally. And if there be anything, any habit from the past or from the old, old that you are struggling with, as you burrow deeper into Christ, the old indeed has fallen away and it shall fall off completely in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. So you can go on the blog um, www.imperfectlyperfectlives.com for more. On um, We do Bible studies on Wednesdays. We talk on working in God's purpose for our lives on Mondays. And then relationships and marriages God's way every Saturday. I know it's going to be a blessing to you. And God is going to transform your lives one way or the other with the words on the blog. So till our next vlog. Stay strong in Christ, like strong in Christ. Yes, yes. See ya. Bye.